Besties, welcome if you're new, I'm Alicia. A lot of you have asked for more savory breakfast options, and one thing that sounds weird to some but is becoming very popular is savory oatmeal. I've got eight variations for you today and a free ebook with all of the recipes that you can download in the description box too. To make your savory oats, you make regular oats but with a few swaps. Optional, saute some onions and garlic and a little oil until tender. Then add broth or broth diluted with water instead of just water and a bit of salt depending on how salty your broth is. Bring it to a boil. Once boiling, add oats, reduce the heat and cook for about five minutes. Of course, it will depend if you've used rolled or quick cooking oats, how much you're cooking and how thick or soupy you like your oatmeal. I am making a lot because I have a lot of oatmeal to show you today. We really just made a regular oatmeal right here but added onions and garlic, which you can leave out of savory oats if you'd like and we used broth instead of water. So easy and it's going to make it fun to add to with these savory variations. First up, the black. Typically, it is bacon, lettuce, avocado, tomato. I have done the same, but I'm adding bacon, parsley, avocado, tomatoes, and sesame seeds. I don't really want lettuce in my oatmeal, but to each his own. The classic combo of bacon, avocado, and tomato works as well here as it does anywhere. And if you're wary of savory oatmeal because you're used to it being sweet, think of it like you would polenta or grits with a thicker texture. It can really make your regular boiling breakfast routine a little more fun. Next up, the greeny. I top off this savory oatmeal with sauteed spinach, green peas, some shaved Parmesan, chives, basil, and a poached egg. I always get people asking me how to poach an egg. Let me show you my favorite way. I bring water to a light boil, very light, just as the bubbles are coming up from the sides of the pan but not rolling, just over medium heat or so. Then I add salt and white vinegar and stir. The magic is in the whirlpool. I literally call it the magical whirlpool when I'm cooking it. I've got the egg cracked into an easy to pour measuring cup to make sure the yolk isn't already broken. I get the whirlpool going and quickly to keep that swirl a moving, I drop the egg into the center and let the whirlpool do its thing. Because it is swirling, it helps to keep the egg contained so it's a nice round poached egg and not floppy and wide. The next step is not to leave it too long. Move it occasionally so it doesn't get stuck to the bottom of the pan and how long you leave it depends on your preference. I like it poached easy and about two and a half minutes is perfect perfect for me, but if you like it easier, go for two minutes or harder, go for a little longer than three. Remove it onto a paper towel to drain and then add it to your oatmeal. Ugh, that yolky goodness just makes me so happy. Honestly, I could put a yolky egg on anything and it would make it better, but you could of course omit too. I think it's a must for this green packed bowl and paired with Parmesan, it is a savory delight. We've got a classic next, sausage, egg and cheese. It is as easy as it sounds. I add cheddar cheese so it melts between the warm oats and then the cooked sausage of your choice. And of course, a fried egg. And for a little green and freshness, some chives. Man, it is so simple, but you just can't go wrong with it. That cheese melts to give this an indulgent texture. And again, that yolk though. If you are hesitant about savory oats, this could be a good one to start with. Let's kick things up a notch with this sweet and savory sesame bowl. I like to char my chicken apple sausage first to give it more flavor. A lot of the ones you buy are pre-cooked so you don't actually need to cook them, but it does make them taste even better. I also roast up some butternut squash in the oven, very basic, but I do like to cut the cubes extra small so they're bite-sized for the oatmeal bowl. <laughs> We are getting creative here by stirring in some sesame oil into the oats before we add sausage and butternut squash topping along with some blueberries and sesame seeds. If you have watched my meal prep videos, you may have seen these ingredients together before. This combo over rice or cauliflower rice is a regular go-to for me, so why not over oatmeal too? It is perfect for breakfast, but could totally be for any meal of the day too. I've got the caramelized bowl up next. First, I stir in some goat cheese crumbles because it melts and gets so creamy and delicious. Then I top it off with sauteed onions and mushrooms, a little extra goat cheese for good measure, and pine nuts with chives. Those caramelized onions and mushrooms have a natural sweetness to them, which of course pairs well with the oatmeal and goat cheese, but what I really love is the texture those pine nuts add. So buttery and crunchy, it gives a really nice contrast to the other ingredients. Can you believe there's more? 
I am combining Mexican inspired flavors with oats in this Southwestern bowl. Before we go on, if you are liking these and want more videos like this, more free eBooks, tutorials, etc., please subscribe and hit the bell so you are notified of new videos. I appreciate it. For the Southwestern oatmeal bowl, I mix taco seasoning into the oatmeal first, then I can top it off with salsa, corn, cheddar cheese, avocado, jalapeno slices, cilantro, and a squeeze of lime juice. Wow, that is a burst of flavor. Sweet, spicy, savory, and tang all in one. You guys, this oatmeal is really just such a great base for anything. You can get creative and go crazy with it because if you start with that neutral and unsweetened oatmeal base, it's really versatile for flavor pairings. Sweet and savory curry oatmeal is next. I roast up some frozen pearl onions. It is so easy. Just let them thaw for a bit before putting them on the pan and into the oven. For the oatmeal, I stir some curry powder and then top it off with those delicious onions, diced prunes, or you could use raisins or dried cranberries too, and pumpkin seeds. So much flavor, and the onions, dried fruit, and pumpkin seeds also give me a variety of textures, which is really what I think the oatmeal needs so it doesn't just become a mushy pile of, well, mush. Okay, we've come to the last one, but you're gonna be glad you stuck around. Spicy peanut oatmeal. For this one, I recommend adding some fresh ginger when you saute the garlic and onions, if you choose to, and cooking the oatmeal in coconut milk instead of broth or water and some salt. It is going to infuse so much more flavor to help counter some of the spice we're going to add. You could really use this base for some of the other combos we've shown too. Once it's cooked, I stir in a bit of soy sauce and peanut butter into my serving. On top, I add peanuts, sriracha topping, crushed red pepper, and green onions. Wow, this is another crazy combo that is so good. If you have never tried peanut butter and sriracha, now is the time because it's mind blowing, it's so good. That oatmeal base and the naturally sweet coconut milk keep it mild enough that I can handle it. I am not huge on spice, but this bowl is huge on flavor, which I love and I think you will too. Let me know which of these you're most excited to try. The exact ingredient amounts and recipes are in the free ebook in the description box. I have also given some nutrition info, which will vary based on your serving size, but it's there in the ebook for you to reference if you'd like. The recipes are also linked to my website below. I hope you can get creative with oatmeal if you've been bored with breakfast. There are so many options. Thanks so much for being here today. We have got more to come in the Kickstart series, so I will see you tomorrow. And remember, it's all a matter of mind over munch.